probably in the past I've been almost more starstruck. Like I got to do a film with Scorsese and I was like, oh my God, that's Martin Scorsese. And it didn't even matter who was in the film. It was just like, fuck, that's Martin Scorsese. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. that's like, that's like Goodfellas. That's the, that's the man. Welcome to It Was All A Dream with me, Nathan. Today I'm joined by Jonathan. Jonathan, if you want to introduce yourself, let the people know who you are and what it is you do. Um, well, I do many things, Nate. <laughs> but um, I think here we're talking about stunts and um, I've been a member of the British Stunt Register since 1993, would you believe? Amazing. Um, and... Uh, I'm a stunt coordinator now, but um, I still, I you know, I still occasionally get called to perform stunts as well. But I spent many years performing stunts, and um, yeah, now now do a little of both. Yeah, oh, that's incredible. So, was it always your dream to fall under the stunt man or coordination? No, no. Not not really. I I um my my dad was in the industry, um, and when I was a kid, I had um quite often when other kids were being picked up from school by their parents, I'd get picked up by a taxi driver, which was a bit odd, but kind of just I accepted it, and um taken to Shepton or Elstree or Pinewood or something like that to watch my dad work. Um, he was a film director. So he was much more in the creative, um, you know, the, the the sort of the creative visionary on the job, if you like. Um, and I, I think, you know, I mean, he passed away when I was 17, so I lost him quite young. But my I kind of felt like I would get into either the film industry or the music business and um when when i was sort of in my early 20s i got a job from a mate of my dad's who was a producer who just wanted to sort of you know help me out and he got me a job as a runner um at uh shepson so i was really just doing a bit of everything when i was doing that and um and then i met um a a legend legend of a stuntman who's uh just recently had his birthday called rocky taylor and um, Rocky sort of introduced me to the stunt world and said, you know, because I was I was doing quite a lot of sports and, you know, martial arts and things like that anyway. And he yeah. said to me, well, you know, why don't you why don't you just give it a go? So um, I, I think I wasn't sure what aspect of the industry I was going to get into. Um, and I, I was really, you know, stunts really seemed like a, a nice way for me to. um be in the industry and sort of look around and see where I wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. And then what, once I was sort of in stunts, it just kind of took over and then, you know, I was earning a good living and I was having adventures and yeah, I'm still in it today. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So, Can yeah. I ask what your dream was when you was younger? Obviously you mentioned it was um, to kind of go into that film, like industry anyway, um, or music industry. My dream's always been the same. I don't think it's ever changed. Um, I just, yeah, to me, rock stars have the best life ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, fair. yeah. But, you know, I, I, I like to think of myself as a bit of a rock star anyway. Mm. No, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so would you say that it would have been possibly your dad that inspired that dream? And, um, and then obviously Rocky, that, inspired the stuntman dream um really so more of the question is what inspired you to kind of go down that route yeah i i I think it was a probably a combination it was more my dad and then my dad's big business partner at the time who was a producer called greg smith 
who also sadly is no longer with us. But um, you know, he was he was very well known in his day. And um I guess oh let me just turn that around. Sorry about yeah, that. No, no, you're fine. Swap hands. Um yeah, I, I guess it, it was it wasn't like a direct inspiration to get into stunts. I think it was more about a fascination with the industry, with the with the creative industry, you know, that, that is the film business, with yeah. the that that kind of um magic of taking an idea making the idea into something and then obviously seeing it on the big screen is still exciting yeah oh no 100%. Mm. so mm. um how old was you when you kind of discovered the stuntman option and like and that and that career path i would have been in my early 20s okay cool because I, I often find like when you think of obviously doing stuff as a dream, mm. you automatically think you've got to have known it by like six and you haven't, you know, I mean, I was, no. I was 20 when I started doing photography and videography myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's just kind of like, I think it's nice for people to hear that message that you haven't got to be that young to no, know. What you, not, you know what I mean? not at all. Oh, honestly, I'll tell you, like I, I met a guy, recently who got into stunts i think he was i think he's now about 47 and he just went through his qualifications properly and got onto the british stunt register so you know at the end of the day i think if you're if you're determined and you're focused and you have a dream or you have a goal why not yeah um, you know as long as your body and mind allow you to do it, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Mm. And that just touching mm. on that, you mentioned obviously that he got qualifications and stuff. Just for anybody obviously listening to this that potentially wants to now follow in that footsteps of looking into like being a stuntman or anything like that, is there any bits of advice that you would give to them or anything that they might have to potentially do oh. to kind of follow that footstep? Yeah, I mean, the easiest thing is to contact the British Stunt Register. Um, we're we're a very well organised and well established group of people, um, and you know the actual paperwork of what you need to do will be sent straight to you. Um, and pretty much at the moment, you need to do like a, a, um, the 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 sort of the basis, if you like, is six different sports. And you can choose the list, you know, you can choose from a long list and yeah. you pick six different sports that you need to get a a certain qualification in each one. Okay. Yeah? Um, and then when you've got those and you become an equity member, you can then move into the, um, uh, the application process and then join the stunt register and you start there's various tiers within the stunt register so every few years you can move from stunt performer to senior stunt performer to what they call key stunt performer who can assist stunt coordinators yeah. um yeah right the way through to stunt coordinator and it just you know it's a it's a gradual process and throughout each step there's various hoops you need to jump through in terms of um, ticking off that you've had experience on jobs that you've been doing uh, a, a good wide you know like a, a cross section of different types of stunts and yeah. basically just learning, learning that you know learning the business you know okay yeah yeah cool mm -hmm. um so i know we've mentioned about your dad and rocky and people like that but um yeah. i just wanted to know in even in life it doesn't even have to be just business but who were some of your idols or heroes that you kind of looked up to that kind of pushed you to just keep going? Cause there would have been times where you thought about either giving up that could have been like, even after your father passed away or anything like that. Um, that yeah. just kind of kept like any people that you looked up to, to push you to keep going. Yeah. So not necessarily stunt people, you mean? 
Yeah, it doesn't have to be that. I mean, like for me, uh, Michael Jordan, just his attitude was okay. always. Do you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Is there anybody idols that you kind of had? It could be yeah, a, a, a real a real mixture. I think, you know, like Anthony Kiedis, Dave Grohl, um, Maynard James Keenan, you know, from Tool. Yeah. Um, Tool great band. Yeah, I, I love Tool. <laughs> <laughs> I really that. Yeah. Um, James Hetfield. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Cash. Oh, uh, nice. And then, and then people like, gosh, I mean, I suppose I'm look what, what I'm thinking about, which is quite interesting in your question is, is more back at that time, you know? Yeah. And it, it, it would have also been, I don't know if you know any, and you know, any martial arts people, but like George St. Pierre, who was yeah, very yeah. famous in the UFC, um, Hoist Gracie, famous yeah. jiu-jitsu guy. I love the um, Gracies. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, jiu-jitsu kind of, I think jiu-jitsu sort of keeps me balanced. Um, and uh, who else? So, you know, there's there's some martial artists. There's, And I suppose, you know, maybe, maybe sort of movie-wise, it's interesting. I, actually, I was quite inspired by some film directors. Like okay. Tar Tarantino, of course, was a, you know, the the big kind of pop culture, yeah, you know, director, wasn't he? With his super cool, you know, like your Pulp Fictions and Reservoir Dogs, and it's like, well, you know, the cinema um, gold. Oh yeah, 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 and then and then you know, like Scorsese with his, with his, you know, like I love Goodfellas. It's probably yeah. probably one of my best films, and you know, and I, I just, yeah. Um, I, so I suppose I suppose like quite a cross section of people that that probably fulfilled dreams within me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they I'm were sure. people that had they were people that had um, perhaps reached the pinnacle in their fields, you know, and and I sort of saw something in them that that you know made me sort of inspired me. I suppose. Yeah, no, that's that's nice. That's very really nice. It's nice to hear there's such a wide variety of people as well. Yeah, I I guess it's you know it's probably different aspects of your own character, isn't it? That you want yeah, to definitely. develop, you know. And it's not no. like you necessarily want to be the same as those people, but there's just something about you know something about those people that stands out. Yeah. It could just be the way they carry themselves or the charisma they have. And you're like, yeah. it's just cool, you know, that one one like, Absolutely. Yeah. Like when Tom Hardy walks in a room, you're like, he's just got there's just something about it, like do you know what I mean? And stuff uh, like that. Absolutely. And he, you know, he's he's a very interesting guy. I've I've worked with him on films a couple of times and I've also met him at a jiu-jitsu competition, you know? Yeah, he's heavily involved in that, right? He is, yeah. And um, you know, he he yeah, he he's he he really kind of he has like a part of him that needs to be able to be a normal guy. Yeah, you know, and I mm -hmm. I think that's important to him as well as his Hollywood life. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's cool. I say but, I know a couple of people that know him through like the bike shed, um, which is okay, a place yeah. at Shoreditch and yeah, and, yeah, you know, I, mean, I know the bike shed, yeah. yeah, that's cool. So is there, um, just touching on obviously that that there with Tom, is there any cool stories that you do have where you've gone like ever a moment where you've gone like, is this real? Like, or a, a starstruck moment as such where you've been <laughs> even working on a film and you've gone, I can't be like, this must be a dream. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they they do happen occasionally. I guess I guess they happen less so when you've been in the same business a long time. Yeah. Because not, not that you get blase about it but probably in the past i've been almost more starstruck like i got to do a film with scorsese and i was like oh my god that's martin scorsese and it didn't even matter who was in the film it was just like fuck that's martin scorsese <laughs> and i mean yeah. that's like that's like goodfellas that's the, that's the man casino yeah. you know um but i i guess probably i i really had a pinch yourself moment last year where i um I was very fortunate to be 
Stallone's double on Expendables 4, which hasn't wow. come out yet. And um, when I got a call from the stunt coordinator saying, you know, do you want to come, come in and double Sly? And I was like, nah, really? Shut up. <laughs> and I was like, why are you even asking me that? You know I do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that was just really cool because he's like, he's like, you know, the action hero, isn't he? Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, so, so that was probably one of those moments, exactly as you described. It was like, you know, wow, it's just really happening. Yeah. Amazing. You know, I was ringing my partner every day and going, it's right. He's next to me. It's right. It's Rocky. He's next to me. You know. <laughs> yeah. How was he? Was so, he was he a nice uh, guy? He's super, super nice guy. Yeah. Um almost almost a bit like when he'd walk on set, there was like a almost almost kind of like you you could sort of feel the respect for him. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't get that from being like a shouty asshole. You know, you, you, you get that just because people knew that he he was like the boss. Yeah. You know, he's done it all, he's he's been there, he's earned his stripes. Um and he's just he's just he's just really cool, you know? Yeah, that's incredible. No, that was really cool. That's quite nice yeah, to hear he, as well. Yeah, and he was really super nice to talk to and just respectful and Calm, you know, a bit like it was just a bit of a sort of like movie star Yoda kind of yeah. thing, you know. Mm. Yeah. So you've achieved a lot of success, you know. I, I was going through some of the stuff you've worked with, like you mentioned, Expendables Four, Friday Night Dinner. Uh, I want to say Harry Potter, Game of Thrones. You've done a lot, whether that be coordinating. <laughs> so funny to go from Expendables Four to Friday Night Dinner. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that just shows that like how wide range you are yeah. able to cover with yeah. with what you is you do um so with and the very, so, you know the var the variation sorry to interject there but I was no just no no saying, fine the variation is nice and you can be working on, on like you know eastenders one day and you know kind of batman the next you know what yeah. I mean? so it it you do get i suppose it's the variety that keeps it interesting yeah, hundred percent. I think if if you was working on the same thing, you'd probably feel a bit drained from it. So being around and and just shows that the avenues that you can achieve with with the job is just endless. You know, um, so with what you have achieved, how did you achieve it? Would you say it was from networking or just would like would you going on set and introducing yourself, or would you just kind of going in, doing your job, getting out, like, how would you say you, uh, like, you've achieved such great success? I think, you know, um, I mean, there's a few things come to mind there. First of all, I wouldn't walk around saying I've achieved great success because I don't know how to measure that. Yeah, 100%. But... You know? I'll say on your behalf. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I mean, look, is it a monetary thing? Is it, uh, you know, who you've worked with? Is it, I, I don't know. I've I've had an, a nice variety of experience. Yeah, within my career so far, um, which I'm grateful of. I, I think to start with, um, in terms of what you were saying about networking and that kind of thing, um, there is an element of that, certainly. And, you know, when you get on, nobody knows you when you first start. You need to just, you know, you... I suppose you hang out with people. Obviously, the more you're working, the more work you get because then you're you're yeah. around and you yeah. you're seen. Um, and then you know, as as a stunt coordinator, now it's it's a slightly different pathway because again, there is there's there's always an element of networking. But what does that mean? I suppose that means just getting to know people, yeah. and yeah. hoping that they don't forget you. You know, yeah. um, now, you know, as a, as a stunt performer, um, the, the work comes in from stunt coordinators and, you know, now I'm a stunt coordinator. The work comes in from producers, directors, um, you know, the first, first ADs, but 
line producers and you know even even production accountants basically saying oh you know yeah i remember we worked with that guy and he did a good job and you know people got on with him and maybe the you know the the cast really liked him and you know mm. it, it's it's that sort of thing you know and yeah. then and then yeah so it's it's a less definitive path as a stunt coordinator you know yeah. because you're not it's not about going to the all the sort of like the AGM with the other stunt people and things like that. It's less about that and more about, you know, um, people in the crew remembering you and, and putting your name forwards for new productions, you know? Yeah, 100%. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, mm. And then um, where we obviously mentioned about the being the double for Sly and like... Mm obviously all the stuff you've done, you have achieved a lot in your career. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that, like, that stands out to you that you would say is your proudest moment? Is it maybe yeah. seeing your name on the end credits for the first ever time or, do you know, any, anything like that where you've, like, it's just brought an instant smile to your face and you're just proud of, like, you've achieved it almost? Well, okay, starting with what you finished with, I was proud to double slide. Um... I I would say, you know, like like on Game of Thrones, when I was a performer, we did a, a record-breaking burn where they set fire to more people in one go than never had been done before. And, uh, you know, I was pretty proud to be part of that. That was an epic day. Yeah. Um, a certain amount of tension with us all getting ready. But once it was done, just like, you, you know, just the the sort of the deflating of everyone's sort of like um you know coiled springs all going ah yeah and you know that that was a good day um obviously a huge amount for the coordinator riding on that you know um just make sure everybody was safe and it all went to plan yeah so that was exciting um yeah i that, that there's there's lots of things you know the thing that makes a job memorable is not always the size of the job, but sometimes just because you're working with really great people that you want to go back in to work the next day, you know, and you want to give it your all because you're part of a great team, you know? Yeah, definitely. I, I think a team makes a massive difference. You know, you work for yeah, people. Does. You don't work for a company. Absolutely. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how successful you are. You, got, you know, you're not an army of one. No, you know, in my industry, you're part of a big wheel. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, um, and uh, you know, I've I've worked with some great people. I've I've had some great fun on jobs, um, and and sometimes they're memorable because they're fun. Um, and I I remember things like I remember once performing a stunt where I was actually hung from Tower Bridge wow. in a film, and because obviously Tower Bridge is such a public place, they could only really cordon off a small area for yeah. the cameras to shoot yeah. on. And um, obviously, when they'd done the hanging, uh, and then I was, I was, you know, gave the thumbs up to let everyone know I was okay when we'd finished. Um, you know, there was a huge round of applause because everyone on the other side, the public, hundreds of people in the public, had all gathered to watch the filming. So, um, <laughs> you know, so so there's moments like that where you just think, oh, that was cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I can imagine it's been nice as well to not only just be able to do the jobs you've done with your career, mm. but also see the places you've probably seen with your career, right? I can imagine a lot of them yeah. are in air hangers and stuff like that, but nine times out of, like, I can imagine you've had the odd job of travelling and stuff like that, which has been yeah, lovely yeah, yeah. Too. Absolutely, and, you know, sometimes sometimes it is like, a, it can be a pinch yourself moment, as you as we were talking about earlier, when, like, I was on a, a on a job in Croatia for like two months and it was just beautiful. And we were only like required to be on set three days a week. Yeah. And it was amazing. You know, I was, I was being well paid. I was sitting in the sun working as well and just, you know, swimming in a beautiful ocean and just thinking, you know, does it, does it get any better? Yeah. No, that sounds you know? amazing. It does sound like a, but uh, also, it yeah, it does sound like a rewarding but, you know, thing as well. It, it does, but on the flip side, obviously, you know, there's been plenty of jobs where I've been 
elbow deep in mud and you know cold and long nights going oh my god i'm really earning every penny now <laughs> yeah you know has there ever been a time where you've wanted to quit or like give up on on this career no um no there's been times when i can't, I can't remember when it was maybe late 90s or early 2000s when we did have a bit of a time where the industry kind of went quiet and I was a bit concerned, yeah. you know, think, thinking to myself, oh, you know, do I need something else? Um, but uh, not. it wasn't a case of quitting. It was just thinking, you know, do I need to add another string to my bow? Yeah, 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 of course. You know what if what if the film industry becomes like a, uh, you know, like a dying thing for some reason? But that obviously that didn't happen, you know, and it's bouncing back stronger than ever. Yeah, definitely, it's, it's grown because I mean, even after COVID, there was a lot of concern. Well, during COVID, even mm. there was a lot of concerns mm. and worries. So to see the bounce yeah. back from that is is incredible. Yeah, and I think you know, I think that the world economy is still fragile but you know as with as everybody hopes we're, we're going to start coming out of that you know later this year i hope and we, you know that we have a a rewarding phase in life too you know yeah absolutely so then just mm. uh the final question now is mm. um i know we touched on it earlier on um advice but mm. to advice to anybody watching that wanted to kind of chase their their dream of being in in the film industry i guess we could cover you because you've you've got a lot of knowledge and expertise in that sector so to anybody that wanted to kind of follow those footsteps that you've achieved is there any advice that you'd give to them whether it be be consistent and stuff like that train and or anything like that really that you would just like in a way say to your younger self or or to anybody that was asking for advice i think I think to try and connect up with people that are successful within the area that you want to work in. Yeah. Um, you know, try, try and sort of, um, I think being focused is very important, but I also think there needs to be a little bit of balance. Yeah. So in other words, Say, for example, you had a landscape gardening business mm -hmm. and you wanted to be a stuntman. Yeah. I wouldn't say necessarily just wind up the business and, you know, unless you've got some crazy amount of cash that is hidden away somewhere, I wouldn't say wind up the business and just only trying to get into the stunt register and do stunts. Because it's, I mean, life is unpredictable anyway, as we all know. Yeah. And the the film industry can be quite fickle. And it's not a guaranteed success. I mean, I, I guess to some extent nothing is. But I suppose all I'm saying is, is just if you can have, if you can have something that's a little bit of a sort of fallback, you know? Yeah. Um, that's... Yeah that can be a good thing. And I, I also think it can help keep you sane. Yeah. You know, because to, to suddenly be put in a position, if, if you're not used to it, suddenly be put in a position where pretty much you don't know when you're going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. And you might be, very... you know, you might be lucky and you might fall in with someone that's going to take you under their wing and, yeah. you know, you, and you can do fantastic, but um, you might not, or you might get an injury, um, and you know something unforeseen that might, you know, that may get in the way. Yeah. And I, I just think it's being a little bit mindful of that, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, so still, hundred percent follow follow the dream, but just um, you know, be be a little bit sort of you know cautious as well. And and yeah. just you know be be 
able to ask questions, find people that you connect with, you know, that you feel you can chat to and, you know, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like an amazing advice. Um, so that's everything I have for today. So mm. I really appreciate you jumping on and uh, thank you very much. Hey, it's a pleasure, mate. Real pleasure. Thank you for tuning into this episode of It Was All A Dream. We appreciate your time and support. We hope that you enjoyed the episode and you feel inspired to achieve your dreams. Be sure to give us a follow on social media. We're on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube and Twitter where you can contact us and stay connected with us if you have any feedback on the episodes or guest recommendations. Be sure to stick around after this to see what's upcoming in the next episode. Thank you. Uh, my name is Adrian. Um... I recently opened with my best friend Lucas um, a Smashburg restaurant in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, trying to spread as much love as possible with uh, local ingredients um, and yeah, just as much love as we can put in uh, and always serve with a smile and always try and, and spread as much positivity as possible. <laughs>